Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kastuba Das. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to Mondays. It's a new week. It's a new week to do whatever you want. No. <laughs> it's a new week to let last week go. Let it let uh, yesterday go and cre- recreate yourself. How about that? That's a better way to look at it. Okay. Do we can't do whatever we want, can we? <laughs> you can. You have to accept <laughs> the consequences, I suppose. <laughs> oh, what a weekend. What an exciting filled weekend. Uh me and Mara spent some quality time at the Swanson Inn, Sister Inn of the Waitsfield Inn, more vegetarian prashadam bed and breakfast in Vermont. If you ever want to get away, go to a nice bed and breakfast, the Swanson Inn or the Waitsfield Inn in Waitsfield, Vermont. We were there. It was great. We hung out with the devotees there. The Bright Light was there. Samya was there. Srinivas and Melanie uh, uh, Martine were there. We had a just great association, Kostuba. That's nice. That's we nice. ate uh, waffles and we uh, kayaked. Did that? Kayak. 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 So you're going to go canoeing. Yeah, well, you know, kayaks and canoes, they're like sisters also. They're friends. Okay. It's okay. You can, but the kayak, you can switch you out one you, for the other. You, you, your head goes under the water. You, they, they flop upside down. No, that's old school kayak and where you're like spinning around like a nut going over waterfalls. This is like <laughs> mellow lake kayaking. All right. Did some nice. of that. And then uh, what else did we do? We went for a long bike ride in Burlington. That was beautiful. We played a trivia game. Played some tri- bright light. Uh, played some trivia. Okay. That was fun. Krishna conscious trivia, of course. Yeah, of that course. was good. That was good. Do you feel refreshed, rejuvenated? I do. Had some quality time with Tarun. It was very nice. Good for you. Now we're back at the farm and we got live live here. We got Catherine A and Maya here. Nice. Yeah. What's up with you? What did you do this weekend? Uh, yesterday I just got a uh, it was it was afternoon. I got a surprise phone call. Uh, Yogi Charu was just uh, in the park, just right near my place. He and his lovely wife Yvonne, and uh, we hung out. Let me and ask I you a question. Him over. I made him a little dinner, and we had a good time. What a nice time. He's a great soul. Both of them. He's a great soul. Yeah. Hey, whatever happened to the Swami? We had a Swami roommate this weekend, I thought. Not a roommate. He just came over, and we spent a little time together. Oh, I thought he was staying at your house. That was entirely... Did I make that up? Your own... You made that up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you guys were having a slumber party, talking late up, late night, late night, uh, no, pillow we sp- talk, just we gabbing. On Friday. We had a nice conversation. It was good. Okay. Tell me all about Christian consciousness. <laughs> yeah, you tell me. <laughs> what are your realizations? Okay, right. let's keep this moving. Let's keep yeah. it moving a little forward here. It is moving. It is moving. Let's move it towards Blav with Tom Graduate. But the first step is... We, first we step is I'm going to be in Nashville this week, my friend. I'm going to be in Nashville at Yoga Soul Nashville. Okay. Uh, I think that's Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm not quite positive. Email Cindy. Tuesday and Wednesday at Yoga Soul Nashville for Kirtan, for some asana, for a little bit of everything. 
Then I'm going up to uh, the Atlanta Temple. I'm going to do Kirtan, a little satsang on the 21st, accompanied by Miss Kylie Brown, the Dust of Brudge. Oh, nice. We're going to sing nice. together. She's like, I didn't know about that. Well, you are, Kylie. <laughs> get ready to get called out. And then Friday, Kylie's setting up a program for me at Kailash, which is... Uh, Kailash? Kailash, yes. It's a studio. I was there last year, too, at the same time. And it's a great program. Talk to Kylie. Kashi. Um, Kashi. Kashi. Did I say Kailash? Mm-hmm. Kashi. Hi, Kashi. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, and then doing that. And then Youth of Today is playing the furnace festival i'm somehow switching hats and playing a hardcore set in front of a few thousand people and then uh, i'm going to take off that hat drive back to atlanta fly up north and do the last day of the ahimsa festival with kirtan and sangha and stuff like that so it's a busy busy little week yeah, for me I thought you just the last show you're saying how you had slowed down or i have slowed down that's slow <laughs> okay. for me all right <laughs> Are there any other announcements, Mara G? Yeah, we have uh, back to recovery group meetings today at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and 9 p.m. Eastern time. And we'll do the show at 8 a.m. for the rest of the week. 8 a.m. for the rest of the week. Okay. Yep. Wah, 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 wah. Sorry, it's sleep in week. Also, I want to mention that the uh, people are signing up like crazy, they say, for the Sage groups. Like crazy. Yeah. yeah. So uh, they opened yesterday. You can go to wisdomofthesages.com uh, slash sage groups or click on sage groups and uh, get yourself in a group soon because they're filling up. They want to, I mean, we'll, we'll try to facilitate anybody that wants to sign up and we'll create new groups. We have to, but if there's a group that you want to get in like Maris group, which is apparently a yeah. very special group. It's not a competition. They're all the same. They're not. but um but if you want to you know you might have a particular group you want to get in but they're filling up so the sooner you you get in there the better oh krishna all right are you ready for a nugget Mm -mm. yes here's the nugget it's from jonathan livingston seagull no it's from jonathan swift that's right and he was was jonathan swift he was a poet philosopher outspoken englishman he was uh i have no idea who he is but anglo i just guessed satirist. that bio and i think i was close he was an anglo irish satirist essayist political pamphleteer a political pamphleteer a poet and an anglican cleric who became dean of saint patrick's cathedral in dublin Hence, he's been known as Dean Swift, but he wrote um, Gulliver's Travels, Raga. Oh, that's right. Okay. As it's well a book. As other important uh, texts. What's he got to say? He said this. He was also chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> I don't know I don't if he was, he was, but he, he might, might be. be now. He might Good. be now. Here, here he is. Although men are accused of not knowing their own weakness, yet perhaps few know their own strength. How it is in you, men. You, you've read that first part almost like you're accusing someone of something. <laughs> <laughs> Although men are accused of not knowing their own weakness, yet perhaps few know their own strength. Okay. It is in men, as in soils, where sometimes there is a vein of gold I thought which you'd the like owner this. knows not of. Let's talk about soil. It's talking about gold in there. Yeah. Well, think- digging, there's a vein of gold. You got to know what to look for. Yeah. And sometimes we've got it in us. We don't even know it. Is it like that? You're just digging in the earth and you just hit a vein of gold. That uh, I have to talk to some of my gold people and find out. Okay. What did you make of this nugget? Um, yeah, it's uh, sometimes, I mean, this is the beautiful thing about being a, a, a good parent or a good, uh, a good uh, parent, a good guru, a good teacher, a good friend is, is, uh, you train yourselves to see this greatness in people. Um, the, the tendency is we find faults. And sometimes even in our so-called love relationships, like our whole relationship, maybe if we had a, some of us had parents like this. It's like they were constantly telling us what we were doing wrong and tell, instead of telling us what we were doing right. And by he, it's the, the nagging never changes us. We, th- we tend to think if I just nag enough, they'll change. But generally, it's almost like it's it's almost like shame change. Hmm. 
like like um those you vegans think I do that get... too, Rogan? Am I guilty of that? Tell me. You can say. Um. Yes. <laughs> Onward. No, you're but moving me. moving it forward. No. <laughs> okay. No. It, it, it's just like those people who are like standing outside uh of um a furrier or some type of like uh furrier. these animal rights people are standing outside. Shame on you, Katy Perry or some celebrity. Shame on you. And they're trying to shame everybody into changing. And I just don't think that's the the best method. Okay. It doesn't work in a family shaming your children to change. They might change, but they may resent you, might even resent your cause. And so internally they don't change. So we do the opposite of that. And we start to notice the good qualities of people. And when you notice the good qualities of people, it it gives them permission to sort of like first notice it in themselves and also escape that skin. Like a snake has to shed a skin, escape that skin that they've been wearing, that they've been identifying with. And while wow, you think I'm great, you think I could do that, you think that's me, you think I, that's possible. I mean, you see that in me. And that's a powerful thing. If we've had somebody in our life that has believed in us more than we believed in ourselves, that's a very, very um, influential person to us. And it makes us sort of climb to new heights. And um, <clears throat> that's it's wor- sort of what the guru does. Hmm. The guru sees something in us that we can't see. You know, it's our it's our whole language in Bhakti. We're not seeing a person for black or white or straight or gay or Republican or Democrat. And when devotees do drop to that lower level, they cheat. They cheat the recipients. They treat their they 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 um not cheat. They, they they cheat. They cheat their community. Keep it very high. See people for what they actually are. Mm-hmm. You're a pure spirit soul. That's my identity. That's their identity. That's everybody's identity and treat them like that. And then all of a sudden it raises the consciousness everywhere and people can step into that. You know, I was from a broken family or an abuse family or an abandoned family. You know, I was abandoned by my family. I was a drug addict or I was an alcoholic or I was. You're none of those things. You're a pure spirit soul. And every pure spirit soul goes through the ringer. That's part of being in the material world. But we're not going to see you as what you are, what you did, you know, even where you are now. We're going to see you as pure potential. Hmm? Hmm. Yeah, I I like that. I am. um, I was taking it more on that existential level that you're getting to now that 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 um, despite it's, it's hard for us not to become completely caught up in the externals. Mm. It's, it's it's hard for us, you know, I, I, over the weekend, we took a question where someone very sincerely reached out and said, you know, I'm practicing this, but I feel unmotivated. I feel even depressed, you know. Uh, it's hard for us not to identify with with our external circumstances and and, and grant that, like, uh, the status of reality, the true reality, right? The, 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 but, but transcendentalists what do we call it? endeavoring transcendentalists endeavoring transcendentalists yeah they're they're actually training their minds to to see what's harder to see what's lying underneath mm. you know this idea that every living being is this vein of gold right there's there's my body there's my mind that's like the soil right but there's this vein of gold within that that's the self Right. It's of a it's, you know, gold, I guess, is considered so special because of its qualities. Right. It's like um, yep. it doesn't rust. It doesn't you know, it's got a beautiful um, glow to it, a beautiful kind of aura about it. And, and it doesn't get rusty or anything like that. It's, it's a special, you know, on, on a material level, there's something very special about gold. And the self is like that, although the body has its faults, although the mind has its faults, the self actually doesn't. You know, this underneath the self is entirely pure. It's only when we're seeing the self through the body and through the mind does the self seem all warped, even our mm. own self, right? Even our own self. We can't perceive our own self because we're identifying with the mind, because we're identifying with the body. And we spend, you know, our lives all caught up in the body and the mind of our, our own and the body and the minds of others. The transcendentalists, they're focused on that vein of gold even when someone's coming at them with some kind of disruptive type of energy or some kind of unpleasant type of energy, 
they've trained the mind to see, okay, I get it. You know, like their mind is, is a little warped, a little twisted, but I know that underneath that is the true self. And, and I love what you're saying right now. It's just like, if you actually treat the person based on that knowledge, mm. right? If you, if you can, obviously if someone's behaving in a certain way that requires a certain type of response for the safety of others or, or whatever, then you, then you got to deal with that. But in general, even if people are coming at you with an energy that is um, not so, where the self is not really shining through, mm. right? That, that that pure self is not really shining through, that pure, beautiful self is not really shining through. The, 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 the endeavoring transcendentalist is like saying, I know it's under there and I know I'm not gonna be turned off by this packaging on the outside. You know, I know there's that vein of gold within let me always practice seeing that. And I think as you're saying, you know, like when we're trying to see that in others, it, it facilitates it for it to come out in them. Right. It also even facilitates it to come out in us. It's like, cause now we're situated in truth. Now we're seeing reality, learning to operate on that. This isn't just some mind game or some kind yeah, of, it pleasant, is reality. Uh, it, this is the reality that every living being is, is pure spirit. Yoga is the practice by which we get past the mind. We overcome mm. the obstacle of the mind for the purpose of understanding that real self. The real self in, in our own body, the real self in the body of others, that we just train ourselves to see that. Uh, it, it, what a, this, is, this is what human life is meant for, trying, mm. to, trying, to, trying to see spirit where it exists. I, I, you know, I had, it was great uh, getting together with Yogi True yesterday. You know, we, we uh, were just hanging out in the park relishing and relishing we were we we were just sharing our thoughts of what we're studying what we're thinking about you know he had really good thoughts you know he always does he's one of those people that his his life is very much about purifying his thoughts you know and he was just saying he was talking about like religious sectarianism mm. and how we fight even over like like um places that we consider holy like you take the middle east right right basically you have like three different religions with an interest in that spot like jerusalem and you know mm. and and they're they're thinking that this spot is holy and we must get it even if we need to fight even if we need to kill <laughs> you know um not realizing that actually the higher vision is that every spot on the earth is holy, right? It's like, it's, it's all the energy of God. And, and, and it's by your consciousness that you transform, that it becomes evident, right? A small community can get together in consciousness of God and consciousness of their spiritual nature, wherever they are. And you got yourself a holy spot. And you have, exactly, you have yourself exactly. a holy spot. This yeah. computer screen of mine is a place of pilgrimage. Oh, for me. <laughs> it's a place of pilgrimage. Yeah, even though it's, you know, you, 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 <laughs> imagine, imagine if I do that. It's a big pilgrim. I'm just, everyone's going on my pilgrimage. Okay, pilgrimage starts next month. Like, wait a second, where are we? <laughs> we're in like, some computer like we're here. cafe. I lead them to my computer screen. This isn't India. Well, yeah, but that that is our that is what our texts say, right? That the the that the the people that have this vision that they are virtual walking holy places. Walking holy places. It's not it, it, the the texts say it's not the place that makes it holy. It's, it's the, the people, people that come to the place. Yeah. So, so, so there's oh, there's what we call the Kanishta Adhikari vision, right? Which is like, okay, I believe in God, but only in the most rudimentary. God is in the temple; He's not elsewhere, right? I look at and, House of Pain and uh, Linda, Linda, Linda. They're looking me at, at me like, we are going to India, right? You're not really going to take us to your computer. But, but when you have that that very beginner spiritualist attitude, you you're thinking, yeah, God is in my temple, God is in my church, God is there, and the other places they're bad. Right. Mm -hmm. Even within our own tradition. Oh, they're all the other places. They're just illusion, you know, but as one begins to see deeper, begins to see God everywhere, begins to see the soul under underneath everyone, you begin to see God everywhere. And, and when you're seeing God everywhere, then everywhere becomes a holy place. Right. 
So, uh, you know, Jonathan Swift, I think he was onto something here. You know, I think that's what he was getting at, that um, we're accused of not knowing our weaknesses, but the bigger problem is we really, we don't understand our own strength. We don't understand our own nature. Mm. You know, at, we're hearing about it in texts like Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. That's the first step. Let me hear about it. Then I have to train my mind to, 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 to see it, to actually, you know, adjust see it in others see it in myself right and then gradually the mind will catch on and you'll begin to see it all the time you'll begin to see it everywhere you know this another big red flag that pops up with this is the concept of um self-loathing and when we understand that we ourselves are part of god any self-loathing is it's a diss on god you know mm -hmm. Uh, th which is, you know, epidemic in culture right now is sure. uh, this uh, self self hatred, lack of lack of worth. We are, the, our very worth is that we are spiritual beings, and we just for, we forgot that. Right. Wake it's up. A deep, it's a, it's a deep one. Time to wake up. Okay. All right, Rogan, worthy ready? people. Are you ready? You are worthy. I needed to I'll hear say that, that together and hold pinkies. Ready? <laughs> okay. I am worthy. I am worthy. <laughs> of what is the question? <laughs> That's what we're going to do at Yoga Soul Nashville. We're going to hold, hold pinkies saying, I am worthy. I am worthy. I am worthy. Okay. Ryan M. the Muscatianaram, Chayvanarotamam, Devim, Saraswatim, Yasam, the Tojayam, Madirayat. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan, unto Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta prayeshva badreshu nityam bhagavat sevaya bhagavati utamasloke bhaktir bhavati naishtiki. By regular attendance and classes in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees, all that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated. In loving service to the Supreme Lord, whose praise with transcendental songs will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Ajnana Jana Salakaya Chaksurun Militam Nena Tasmai Shri Gurave Maha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance, and my teachers are opening my eyes with a torch light of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. Reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 4, Text 32. Ready to we uh should do a quick little recap. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We've got Prajapati Daksha. You know, Prajapati Daksha reveals himself. Although he he's always kind of like, <laughs> you know, he's kind of his Bhagavatam appearances are like kind of humiliating. Yeah. But what the Bhagavatam often does is it it shows that very advanced person in a state of humiliation. Because it illustrates that even this person, because they didn't get this right, even they were humiliated, mm. right? And so Prajapati Daksha is offering deep insights as his prayers. The Hungs, although they weren't composed by him, he was just repeating <clears throat> them. So that's there. But even Lord Vishnu is going to appear right before him. We may get there today. I'm not sure. You know, like he's so pleased with his prayers. Um, he's got insights. You know, he's he's we, he's we read the somebody. story to uh, Tarun. On the Amar Chitra last night. Oh. The story of Daksha. Nice. So so he's he's been praying and he, he started off by by getting into the idea that um there's different levels of perception. There's a lot going on that people aren't seeing. Uh and, and especially that it has to do with understanding that Lord Vishnu is behind everything, facilitating everything. That we're just these little sparks of energy that have desires. And then according to that desire and according to our karma, the choices that we've made about, you know, according to those desires in the past, it's Lord Vishnu that arranges everything, that facilitates everything. Try to see the world like that. He's, he's giving us a, a whole nother understanding of what our reality in this universe is. And then he got to the idea, then he, he kind of uh, continued to the idea that um, people have different viewpoints. Mm. Sometimes they argue about these different viewpoints. Um, actually, it's Lord Vishnu within the heart of each living being that's that's either revealing truth or withholding truth, and even facilitating the conflict 
that we have in this world, right? That that we, what was, I'll read that text again, text 31. He said that um, acting from within the core of the hearts of all philosophers who propagate various views, he causes them to forget their own souls while sometimes agreeing and sometimes disagreeing among themselves. Thus he creates within this material world a situation in which they are unable to come to a conclusion. I offer my obeisances <clears throat> unto him, right? And so we see the world is very much like that. We have different philosophers, different political philosophies, different theological ideas. Um, it's, it's so many different, you know, ideas, social ideas and so on. And we tend to, there's always disagreement. Everybody's convinced that they're right. That's part of what our material experience is all about. There's no harmony, right? It's, there's only harmony around Lord Vishnu, not away from Lord Vishnu, right? Then, mm -hmm. then we all have our different little centers and I'm the center. No, I'm the center. My community is the center. My community is the center. Let's fight. Your center's got issues. <laughs> <clears throat> so now in- Winter in, groups. In relation to this verse, text 31 comes text 32, he gets specific about a particular disagreement. And Prabhupada's going to use the terms theist and atheist here. But I think precisely what he's getting at, we could call it more the personalist and the impersonalist, right? The theist in this case are the ones that believe in a personal form of the, the divine. And the atheists, the non-theists, are the ones that say there's no... There's an energy behind everything, but there's not a person behind it, which are two commonly competing schools within Vedanta. All right. I'm going to hit text 32. There are two parties, namely theists and atheists. The theist who accepts the super soul finds the spiritual cause through mystic yoga. The Shankyite, however, who merely analyzes the material elements comes to a conclusion of impersonalism and does not accept a supreme cause whether bhagavan paramatma or even brahman instead he is preoccupied with the superfluous external activities of material nature mm. ultimately however both parties demonstrate the absolute truth because although they are opposing statements their object is the same ultimate cause okay they're both approaching the same supreme brahman to whom I offer my respectful obeisances. Hmm. What's going on, Ragnar? Oh, I thought you were going to say something. Oh, I can't. I, was I just backed off the here. mic. <laughs> you don't have to back off the mic. Okay. But yeah, you know, um, so he's saying, okay, there's, you know, there's that old elephant. Is that is that a biblical thing, the, the elephant, the five different men that are checking out the elephant? I think that's a Vedic thing. Mm, I don't know. They had elephants. Mara, could you the, check the out the elephant East? story? Elephant analogy. Elephant, five people checking out the different elephant. She's on it. But um, if we go to to again the the second canto, or the first second chapter, the first canto. Um, you have that very. There's many important verses there. Everything's kind of laid out in that chapter. Hmm. And you, of course, you have that verse Vedanti tat tatva vidas, tatvam yajganam advayam. Advayam means non-dual. It's there, there are different ways that people are seeing the absolute truth. Learned transcendentalists who know the absolute truth call this non dual substance Brahman, Paramahma, Bhagavan. It's one substance, God, but they're seeing different features of God and they're convinced that their feature is the one, right? Just like these elephant people. Mary, you got the elephant thing? Yeah, the Buddhist text. Uh, Tita Sutta. Yeah, Buddha Maris a little quiet. sounds a little quiet. Contains why. one of the earliest version of the story, so it came from the Buddhists, according the to Buddha. Wikipedia, or at least one of the earliest. But it's stories. in Hinduism, Jainism, Buddhism, Sufism. It's everywhere. Yeah, it's Buddhists claim everything. <laughs> Easy on the Buddhists, Rogan. Now you're ready to fight <laughs> with the Buddhists. Easy. <laughs> Buddhist. Buddhist. Okay. So so yeah, just like in that story where there's like a. Uh, Five, one, five blind men or blindfolded men. Yeah. And they're each feeling the elephant. What, what is it like? Yeah, they're all giving their opinion. Oh, it's a big flappy thing. Oh, it's a long, hosey thing. <laughs> hosey thing. Hosey like it's a thing. Big tr tree trunk thing. It's a big tree trunk thing. It's a long, it's a skinny thing with a fluffy yeah. thing on the end. Yeah. So, no. so 
they're all seeing the same thing, but they're seeing it's different features. Sure. So, so Bhagavatam's saying that, you know what? There is a non-personal feature of the absolute called Brahman. Right. There is a localized feature within the heart of every living being, within every atom, that's called Paramatma. But ultimately, there's a person behind it all, too. And, and, and um, they're all valid. But when you understand the person, it's kind of like that person that said, oh, this is an elephant. <laughs> right? Like, right. It, the, the trunk is real, and, and the tail is real, and the leg is real, and all those things are real. But the one that understands this is an elephant, actually understands everything sure they understand the trunk they understand they're not the all wrong but if you can actually see the elephant you get the whole you get the whole you get picture. everything yeah and, yeah. and so Prajapati reduction is going to work towards that in, in, in his uh following mm. verses all right continuing on the, the supreme personality of godhead who is inconceivably opulent who's devoid of all material names forms and pastimes and who is all pervading is especially merciful to the devotees who worship his lotus feet okay thus he exhibits transcendental forms and names with his different pastimes may that supreme personality of godhead whose form is eternal and full of knowledge and bliss be merciful to me yeah so he doesn't have material pastimes he doesn't have a material name he doesn't have a material form but he's got all those things sure Right. So he's saying, yeah, people, you know, people are in disagreement. Different philosophers are always disagreeing and they're disagreeing on this idea of whether God is formless or has form. Yeah. And, and now he, in this verse, he's saying they're both real. They both exist, but I'm focusing on that, that form of God because it's from that form that everything comes, including the formless God. And he's saying that this is particularly special, right? He's yeah. inconceivably opulent. He's got opulences that that the 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 impersonalist can't even conceive of. That he has a form that never deteriorates. He has a form that's unlimited. He has a form that can be everywhere in the universe, and the and all the universe can exist within. You you can't you don't get there by speculation. You have to hear about this from from someone outside of our material experience. Right. So the supreme personality of God, who is inconceivably opulent. And who is devoid of all material names, forms, and pastimes, um, and who is all pervading, is especially merciful. That's the point, right? Mm. If you know his impersonal energy, you have a connection with him. But he's especially merciful to those who worship his lotus feet, who are connected to him as a person. Right? If they were material stories, yeah, um, and material descriptions and material songs for that matter, glorifying these stories, we get bored of them. Yeah, you know, we have heard the story of Daksha millions of times. <laughs> you don't get bored of them and it's ever fresh. Mm. It's ever fresh. You learn something new each time. It goes deeper and deeper on the surface. It seems just, it's just like a story. It's not, it's different. You hear the Maha Mantra, you hear these Kirtans, you don't get, they don't get stale. They don't get bored like other, you know, pop songs. Okay. Enough of that. That was a number one song. And then all of a sudden you played it a million times. Now I'm sick of it. And don't want to hear it again. These transcendental songs, you can play them over and over. It's a, it's such a magical thing. If you think about it, we were, lived in an ashram every day. Same song. Every morning, same time, same song, same melody. <laughs> same right? Melody. Same we're melody. We're the same melody. And it wasn't like we. It, it if wasn't someone like sang a different invited... melody, everyone would look at him like, "What are you doing over there?" Back to the melody. And it wasn't like we invited Merrick Mariah Carey in to sing this the morning program either. It was like anybody maybe the sing worst it. singer out there in the temple would be the regular singer. Just and we just sit through that song every day. Yeah. And there was something about that. There's something magical about that song. You just wanted to hear it every into. day and go deeper and deeper and deeper. And another interesting thing is there's also many, many songs you could sing. It's one song, not going wide, going deep again. And that's the power of transcendental things. They go very, very, very deep. They're, they're limitless. They're unlimited. It's, it, it goes deep beyond the center of the earth. Yeah. So, so therefore, Prajapati Daksha, he's focused on that personal form. He's saying that be, because these devotees are very dear to him, those that know him as a person, Right. I want to know you. It would be nice if someone appreciates your brick, your stone wall, Raghunath, which is a manifestation of your energy. And my of. love. 
and my and love. Your love. <laughs> and your love. So if someone appreciates your wall, you appreciate that. But if someone appreciates you as a person more intimately, mm. that will touch you. Okay, I get way, where right? you're going with this. Yes. Yeah, yes. And, and so it's one thing to appreciate Krishna's non-personal, all-pervasive Brahman, his eternality, his, his feature of eternality. Right? But it's another thing to love him as sweet baby Krishna. He's particularly merciful to them. And so um, Daksha is calling out to that Lord, right? May that Supreme Lord, who's manifesting these names and these forms and these pastimes, may that Supreme Person, uh, whose form is eternal, full of knowledge, and full of bliss, Satchit Ananda, right? May he be merciful to me. Okay, so he, now he's beginning to reach out and say, help me. As the air carries various characteristics of the physical elements, like the aroma of a flower or colors resulting from a mixture of dust in the air, <laughs> Lord appears through lower systems of worship according to one's desires. Although he appears as the demigods and not in his original form, what is the use of these other forms? May that original Supreme Personality of Godhead please fulfill my desires. You know what he just did? Uh, what? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what? Uh, where? Well, it could be a million where? things. Uh, like, like. <laughs> well, it's only like well, he told, two sentences he here. <laughs> prayer, he told, gave an analogy. Well, yeah, but this analogy and what what he did was he 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 validated different beliefs, but he set them up in a hierarchy. Uh, yeah, that yeah, may yeah, yeah. that may rub some feathers wrong, right? Right. People hate like, hierarchies. How can you say this is higher than that? Just because I saw one doesn't mean there's a hierarchy. That doesn't mean there's not a hierarchy. Yeah. Right. right? Just, yeah. Yeah. So he's saying that. Let's see it again. He says first. He says as the air carries various characteristics of the physical elements, like the aroma of a flower, or colors resulting from the mixture of dust in the air. The, the idea here is that, let's say, um, someone blows a some holy powder through the air right holy powder is like colored powder yeah so there's kind of like a cloud of color h-o-l-i not h-o-l-y right maybe okay holy <laughs> powder that'd be funny too it's holy hey holy why did you do that <laughs> so so the, then the air appears like let's say red right mm. so now if i think that the air is red that that's the ultimate quality of the air i'm going to see very soon that that's going to change and the air is going to appear different, right? If there's if the aroma of a flower is momentarily wafting through the air, and I think, oh, the air smells like jasmine. That right. is what air smells like. I haven't understood what. No, the, the the air is just temporarily manifesting a certain form. That's here and then gone. Yeah. So he's saying that there are forms within this material world that people worship. For instance, the demigods, which are partial manifestations of Krishna's opulence, right? The, the power of Indra, the power of of Brahma, and the, the, the power of the various gods and goddesses, right? They're like, they're, they're, they're manifestations. If we think that that's God, we don't understand what God, just like if we think the air is pink, because temporarily there's some dust flowing through it. We don't really understand air. Sure. And if we think that the bodies of the, the devas, the forms of the devas or the devis are that ultimate form, then we don't really understand what's behind it all. Okay. So, and he's saying, what are the use of these other temporary forms that manifest in, uh, that are manifest one moment and then unmanifest? Why should my interest and my devotion be focused on them? That would be a lower step on a lower rung on the ladder of, of climbing up. It is it, for me to understand that there is a deva or a devi that's providing the rain for me, providing, you know, the, the food for me, providing warmth for me and light for me and so on. That's a step up from my not understanding that. So that's a step up. But if I can understand Krishna, who's the source of all the devas and the devis, who they all serve, if I can understand him behind it all, then there's no need for me to focus on the lower rung. All right. So he says, what is the use of these other forms? He's put mm. them in, he's put them on a hierarchy. Mm. Right? 
And he's saying, may that original Supreme Personality of Godhead fulfill my desires. I'm not going to anyone but him. Mm. Okay. Mm. okay, the next is a bit, it's a few texts tied together. <clears throat> text 35 through 39. Sukadev Goswami speaking. He says, the Personality of Godhead. Oh, that was the, by the way, that was the end of the Hamsaguya prayers right there. Okay. So, so now, okay. now yeah, Sukadev we'll Goswami into... go to stage level two. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari, who is extremely affectionate to his devotees, was very pleased by the prayers offered by Daksha. And thus he appeared at that holy place known as Agamarshana. Agamarshana. Mahara, uh, huh? Agamarshana. Okay. I wonder where that is. Agamarshana. I don't know. Oh, Maharaj Prickett, best of the Kuru dynasty, the Lord's lotus feet rested on the shoulders of his carrier, Garuda. And he appeared with eight long, mighty, and very beautiful arms. I have a question for you, Raghunath. <laughs> Tell me. So it's saying that his feet are resting on Garuda's shoulders. Do you think he's like standing up straight? No, I'm thinking in? sort of like a Harley where you sort of... That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> with your feet going forward. Kind of straddling. Right? Yeah, yeah, straddling. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. Although I think maybe the picture in the, in the Bhagavatam has him standing up straight, which more like hanging 10 on a surfboard. Yeah. <laughs> is it a surfboard? Is it a Harley? We don't know. <laughs> How does he ride? Okay. Okay. So he's riding in on Garuda. This is beautiful. Yeah. Oh, here comes Lord. This is, it's been a while since Lord Vishnu has appeared. He's always appearing, you know. Here's yeah, another so description let's get this of him picture. Appearing. Let's get this picture in what our mind like? right now. Let's carry this picture in our mind. Yeah, let meditation okay. right here. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a guided meditation. Guided, guided meditation. Close your eyes, everybody, and think of Lord Vishnu. Ready? Yeah. Um. The Start he over. has eight. Okay. He appeared with eight long, mighty, very beautiful no, arms. Just, get get Garuda in there first, because that's where it all starts. Right. Okay. He is. His feet are rested on the shoulders of Garuda. So maybe he is in this case. <laughs> Hard to say. It's either Standing the Harley. You or, you can do it either way you want. Harley, the Harley or, or the Hang Ten or the surfboard. Yeah, up to you. <clears throat> um, and uh, he's got eight long, very beautiful arms in his hands. Each arm. This is what they have in each hand: a disc. It's like a a radiant, beautiful, spinning, fiery disc. A conch shell, a gorgeous conch shell, a sword, a shield, an arrow a bow, a rope, why not, right? And a club. <laughs> There's no lotus. I'm missing a lotus here. You know, maybe mm. he, this sounds like a, like sort of like he's got a lot of weapons. Yeah, he does. In each hand was a different weapon. Oop. <laughs> Thinking like Sukadeva Swami. All brilliantly shining. His garments were yellow and his bodily hue, deep bluish. Mm. His eyes and face were very cheerful. Always, Raghunath. Always. Always. Right. Every time we he hear about the appearance of Lord Vishnu, he's got some special smile on his face. This is this basically is saying it's all good. It's going to be okay. It's all good. It's going to be okay. I got you. Yeah. I'm going to carry. <laughs> I'm going to carry what you lack. I'm going to preserve what you have. Um. So his eyes and face were very cheerful. His I'll eyes speak. and face were very cheerful, and from his neck to his feet hung a long garland of flowers. Wow. Didn't get didn't get in his way either. Just fly. Yeah, yeah like if we wore that thing, it'd be awkward. We'd be tripping. It'd be awkward. Over. I'd be dragging it around. Can I take this off now? <laughs> no, it's just like look perfect. Um, his chest was decorated with the Kastuba jewel. That's right. Imagine a little. I'm gonna get a little face of Kastuba and just carry it around with me. <laughs> That's not what it's like. <laughs> and I'm going to say, and if everyone, if everyone asks, well, I'm going to say, it's my Kastuba gem. It's your little head right there. You get a little your, locket. I got, and it's going to have little, it's going to have little things that you can add, like add a, add T-lock to it today. I'm going to add a hat to it. What am I, Mr. Potato Head over here? <laughs> 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 Corn cob pipe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, the, the, it's actually a, a deep green jewel with a calf 
there's some calf inside you know there's a what a calf inside yeah. the jewel yeah some image of a calf inside that Kastuba hmm. jewel from what interesting I've heard. A very interesting how all jewel. these giant famous gems are from this is this is a India, jewel huh? it's, it's worn by krishna it's worn by vishnu this is something unique they say that Prabhupada said that in vaikuntha mm -hmm. Not Goloka Vrindavan, where Krishna resides, but in the Vaikuntha planet, where where at every planet there's a residing form of Lord Vishnu. It, he's he's saying that everybody has these forearm forms, beautiful everybody. forearm forms. It's hard everybody. to tell Just who's Lord Vishnu. Walking down the street, forearms. He's like, which one's Lord Vishnu? You know, because everyone has a form like what do they call it? Sarupya Mukti, liberation, mm -hmm. where you get a form similar to that of the Lord. So you walk around on a planet and everybody's forearm and looking like Lord Vishnu. Which one's Lord Vishnu? Lord Vishnu is wearing the Kastuba jewel. And he's got that Srivatsa on his chest. Mm -hmm. And he said, it's, it, he said, Prabhupada said, uh, it's like um, your president. You know, he's, he's uh, you know, they're all wearing these suits. But he says, the president has a particular seal. <laughs> Although I don't know if the president really, you know, but, but, you know, there's a seal of the president. So that Kastuba jewel is like, it identifies Lord Vishnu also. Uh -huh. Pull over. Let me see your Kastuba. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, some little turbo scenario I'm trying to work out. Okay, so. So that his chest Kastuba is jewel, And yeah. the Marcus Trivatsa. Mm -hmm. On his head was a gorgeous helmet. Round and his helmet. ears were decorated with earrings resembling sharks. Wow. Now, the word, uh, I don't think that is sharks. I think it is the Makara, huh? In the Sanskrit, okay. we do that research. Mm -hmm. On his head was a gorgeous round helmet, and his ear. Wait, I just read that. All these ornaments were uncommonly beautiful. I think we we need to, if we're going to do the meditation right, we have to understand that you can't just picture in your mind the earrings and the helmets and and the bracelets of this world. These yeah. are remarkably fulgent in beautiful glowing ornaments right mm. the wore a golden belt on his waist bracelets on his arms rings on his fingers and ankle belt. oh you hesitated and i know exactly <laughs> don't even go there <laughs> rings on, on his, his fingers and bells <laughs> on his toes <laughs> Hey, has anybody seen I, my... I should... You knew it. You knew it. I paused. Your... I, know, I, said, you hesitated, I thought to myself, I no, it. I'm not going to sing it. I will not I, sing it this time. I should have just let it go. Okay. He's got rings his on arms, his fingers and rings, rings on his fingers and ankle bells on his feet. <laughs> you hesitated. I knew it. Thus decorated by various ornaments, Lord Hari, who is attractive to all living entities yeah. of the three worlds and is known as Purushottama. The, uh, uh, the highest human being. I, I, the, 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 Uttama Ultimate. Purusha. Yeah. Uh, he was accompanied by great devotees like Narada. Wow. Nanda and all the principal demigods. Oh, wow. Led by the heavenly king, Indra, and the residents of various upper planetary systems such as Siddha Loka, Gandharva Loka, and Charana Loka. Okay, so picture this, Raghunath. Prajapati Daksha has just chanted these prayers. And there's been something in them that's so potent, so real, so effective, so moving, that Lord Vishnu came flying in on Garuda, accompanied by all these great souls from the higher planets, and even from Vaikuntha. This is quite a scene. <laughs> Situated. Situated on both sides of the Lord and behind him as well. These devotees offered him prayers continuously. So what an We're entourage, singing. what an entourage has yeah. come, you know? Yeah. Seeing that wonderfully fulgent form of the personality of Godhead, Prajapati Daksha was first somewhat afraid. Wow. Right. But then he was very pleased to see the Lord and he fell to the ground like a stick, right? Straight down to offer his respects to the I Lord. Wonder I wonder if his fear had to do with like, oh no, I've I've interrupted everyone. Like they've all, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, they're too important to show up all for me. 
I've, you know, I, I, I doubt it was like fear, like they're going to kill me or something like that. Right. 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 So uh, my guess is that it was fear that, that like, there was so, Oh no, so I've humbled. I've, I've interrupted everyone. Yeah. As rivers are filled by water flowing from a mountain, all of Doc's senses were filled with pleasure because of his highly elevated happiness. Doxha. You're, 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 you're mixing sentence. There was a period after pleasure. <laughs> as as rivers are filled by water flowing from a mountain, all of Doxha's senses were filled with pleasure. Okay. Because of his highly elevated happiness, Doxha could not say anything, but simply remained flat on the ground. Okay, so this is like, uh, what is it called? Uh, Sattvika Bhava. Mm. Right? That involuntarily, he's feeling waves of pleasure, of bliss. This, this is a an experience beyond the highest pleasures of material existence, right? It's like, mm. it's like his whole body is filling up with water of bliss, right? It's just like, it's rising and, it, and it's overwhelming him so much. So he's feeling such ecstasy that he can't, um, he can't say anything. He's like, he just can't even talk. Mm. It's like you know, Friday, I, I spoke to uh, Radna Swami on the phone. <clears throat> and uh, it was just like one of these things. It doesn't matter where I was. I was in a completely peculiar, not like a good place to talk to him. And the conversation, first of all, you're like, what? What do I say? And then it's like, you don't even feel where you are anymore. You're, it like takes you right out of that place and puts you in another mm. in another land or something like that. Like it takes we were talking you- about earlier and like you're in, in a yeah. holy place, right? Yeah, you're like you're in a holy place. Um, my dear. Okay, although Prajapati Daksha could not say anything when the Lord, who knows everyone's heart, saw his devotee prostrate in that manner and desiring to increase the population, he addressed him as follows. Okay, now Krishna's going to speak, or Vishnu's Supreme, going to speak. Uh, the Supreme Personality of God had said, "O most fortunate Prachetasa, son of the Prachetas." Right. Because of your great faith in me, you have attained the supreme devotional ecstasy. Indeed, because of your austerities combined with exalted devotion, your life is now successful. You have achieved complete perfection. Wow. Well, how must that feel? Ow! <laughs> that, that's me trying to imitate what perfection must feel like. But, but we're really going to need an explanation of this. I, I think we need to do some research because it seems like very soon, like in the next chapter, he's going to offend a pure devotee. He's going to be revealed, you know? Right. So how, in what sense had he achieved complete perfection? Well, sometimes we screw up. Generally, that doesn't fall under the complete perfection. Complete perfection. <laughs> <laughs> we we got to look into that. We got to ask the right people about this. Okay. Uh-huh. My dear Prajapati Daksha. My dear Prajapati Daksha, you have performed extreme austerities for the welfare and growth of the world. My desire also is that everyone within this world be happy. I'm therefore very pleased with you because you are endeavoring to fulfill my desire for the welfare of the entire world. Okay. Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, the Manus, and all other demigods in the higher planetary systems, and you, Prajapatis, who are increasing the population are working for the benefit of all living entities. Thus, you expansions, thus you expansions of my marginal... You you expansion guys. Thus thus you you expansions, you expansion guys, of my marginal energy are incarnations of my various qualities. Let's stop here, Ronald, because we're out of time, but we could uh, pick up on this horse tomorrow. We're out of time. Yes, want some takeaways? Yeah, Mara, what should we do with our life today? Tell us. I will. Train yourself to see greatness in people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Keep it high and treat others as a pure spirit soul. Keep it high and treat others as a pure spirit soul. Yep. The body and mind have faults, but the self is pure gold. Oh, I like this. I like this. It's the people that come that make a place holy. Oh, Mara, you're knocking it out of the park. Okay. Not it's me. like it's home run guys. after home run. <laughs> you guys. See God everywhere and everywhere becomes holy. Oh. Our worth is that we're spiritual beings who forgot. 
spiritual beings who forgot. There's only harmony around Lord Vishnu, not apart from him. Oh, yeah. Transcendental songs go unlimitedly deep. Mm. Understand it's an elephant. Understand it's an elephant. It's an elephant. It's not just some hosey thing. Oh, Oh, I get it. Understand it's an elephant. And And... And... this better be good. They were all pretty good so far. So let this one be great. Is Vishnu on a Harley or a surfboard? That's the question for today. All right. That was the question. (laughs) Oh, people, thank you. I want to thank all of the people. You know, I was looking through the Wisdom Sages mail. Thank you for the people that give contributions to Wisdom Sages. It's really nice of you. And um, and I apologize. Sometimes I don't give you immediately a thank you letter or something like that. I want you to know thank you. I really appreciate it. If you guys like what we're doing, you can support us. It goes a long way. It is appreciated. Go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. And you can just give whatever you like any month just to keep this going. And we, we're grateful. I'll see everybody down in down the south this week. Looking forward to Nashville, Atlanta, the Furnace Festival. And Furnace. then back up to the Ahimsa Festival this week. we got a big week. And I want You're to thank everybody for the Ahimsa Festival, the Furnace Festival. I'm going from the furnace to a himsa. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is, really. I was always furnace and I am a turnstile and all these hardcore bands. It's like being in the furnace. And then we're gonna go right to uh, a himsa, like the heavens. <laughs> <laughs>